thing week. Okay, so I want to talk about this because I think a lot of people forget. Um, and it's really important to remember that part of conscious manifesting is learning how to not let 3D reality control you and break your habit of allowing the circumstances to tell you your worth and value or make you feel or believe or think that you're either going to get something or you're not. So circumstances will sometimes, not all the time, fall apart or appear like they're getting worse before a manifestation comes in. Again, this is not guaranteed. This is not every time. You don't want to form more limiting beliefs, but this is a perspective to understand that sometimes when everything looks like it's going to shit, when you start consciously thinking different, <laughs> It's actually moving in your favor. It's always moving in your favor, but it's really a sign that you're disrupting everything old. And that's what we want because it requires a new you. You're taking the future you and you're bringing her to the present moment. She thinks different. She believes different. She acts different. She's living a different reality. So you need to understand her and connect to her daily right now in the present moment in order for you to become and uh, continue embodying the new you so it'll force disruption around you. It's going to force disruption internally and it's going to cause disruption externally. Always, always, always. So it's always a good fucking thing. So I have my notes here so I don't stay off track. Um, the first thing is old beliefs are crumbling away. So again, the future you, she is already living the life you want. So she had to come up with a different viewpoint so that she could manifest the solution. The old us from yesterday, from last year, from an hour ago, from 10 years ago is the creator of who I am right now. So if I want something different in the future rather than what I currently have right now, my current reality, it requires me to think different, to choose different. And I always, I hit the trifecta. When you work with me, you get the full embodiment experience. I am about mindset, which is mental diet. I am about embodiment in two ways. Embodiment is feeling the opposite of what you're used to feeling. So if I'm used to feeling unloved, unworthy, not good enough, and scared, I'm going to start practicing how the fuck I can feel worthy, good enough, loved, chosen, um, secure, and confident, and practice that version of myself so I know that I can give myself that experience. Therefore, I don't need an external, an external circumstance to make me feel a certain way because that's how you really start when you understand that and can reinforce that for yourself, it really breaks the dependency off the 3D reality. And then the third way or the second way of embodiment is your choices and behaviors. So someone who doesn't know their worth and love, they lower the bar for themselves. They accept breadcrumbs. They say yes to things they'd rather say no to. A version of you that knows her worth and value, she does not lower the bar ever, 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 ever. And she does not accept less than what she deserves. And so this is where a lot of people trick themselves because they're like, well, I'm affirming all day and I'm saying that I'm a goddess and I'm saying I'm this and that, but then they're still lowering the bar. They're still chasing love. They're still accepting breadcrumbs. Your actions are the last manifestation of your belief system. So if you're still engaging in behaviors of the old you that is rooted in a low self-concept, you are going to keep manifesting in the shit circumstance you don't want because you've not changed. So it's so important to embody in two ways of feeling and then acting behaviors. So your old beliefs are crumbling away, which is what we want. Um, and as you're shifting your mindset and choosing a different reality for yourself, it's, it's like you're going to keep sometimes seeing the same shitty circumstance or it feels like nothing is moving or nothing's different outside of you, but that's an illusion. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to train yourself that when I'm noticing that nothing looks like it's shifting or when I'm noticing that things look the same, then I need to change that story and that observation and the perspective of that observation and say and affirm, oh my God, things are moving. It's just so exciting. Even if I don't see it, it's moving behind the scenes and it's presenting itself more and more daily. And you just persist in that. And you have to understand that it's some beliefs take longer than others in order to change. So some beliefs, like I have had this, I'm sure you all drop in the comments a yes if this has happened to you. 
we could literally just have some kind of belief about anything and then we go watch a movie or we go listen to someone speak and they say something and we're like, oh yeah, well that makes sense and we just easily believe that over what we used to, no problem. And then there's other times where it takes daily practice because we have really believed in something for so long and it's part of our identity and part of a... a thought process, a feeling pattern, and a behavioral experience that we've known mostly our whole lives. So it takes practice to shift that internally and externally. So this is understanding that some beliefs will take longer than others, but all beliefs you can change, which is the good news. This is why we're so powerful. So the second reason why circumstances will look and sometimes appear to be going to shit or not, you know, moving in the direction you want or just falling apart, right? Or getting the complete opposite, worse and worse, it can feel like that, is I'm going to break this down because I don't agree with the way this is taught in mainstream. So some people call it the testing phase. So this is what I do not agree with. Some people believe that the universe is separate from us, that there's something operating outside of us that is deciding for us when and how we get things. Okay, I don't agree with that. I don't think um, I know that the universe, God, divine, whatever you subscribe to is flowing through us all, which is why we all have the ability to create our own experience, whether we choose to or not, that's a whole different story. So I don't believe that the universe is testing you by dangling a carrot in front of your face or presenting it. They're sitting there saying, hmm, there's not like a committee that's like, hmm, I want to give Kim one more week of shit circumstances and see if she's really committed to this. That's not what's happening. What I believe the testing phase is, and it's not even accurate to call it a testing phase, but for shits and giggles, we'll call it a testing phase. What I believe it is, is... It's just your old shit playing out or it's still dominant in you. And the way you're going to know if you're really shifting into the new you, because remember, you can't stay the same old you exactly if you want a different reality, especially if you're shifting self-concept and love. It's going to take a different version of you fundamentally. Absolutely. And it's not that you're broken. It's not that things are wrong with you. It's just you have false beliefs and false behaviors that are creating experiences and love that hurt you. So... The testing phase is when unwanted circumstances are presenting, what's happening internally in me? If I look at that and I believe that as fact and I say, oh my God, I'm not wanted, I'm not good enough, I'm never going to get what I want, well then you know, baby, oh, got more work to do because the old belief is still dominant in me. So it just gives you an opportunity to have a reflection and a look inside of you and what's happening in you. When an unwanted circumstance is showing up and it used to trigger the fuck out of you and now it doesn't trigger you as much, whether that as much is you know, the same experience would trigger me for a week. Now it only triggers me for a day or two. You've made progress, baby. You're shifting shit in your favor. You are on track. Keep, keep going because all the only way you ever want to check progress is internally what's happening in you. So this is how you understand if I'm reacting. A lot of people falsely believe reacting to the 3D means what am I doing on the outside? Um, no, it's what are you doing on the inside? The outside is a delayed response of what your belief is on the inside. So it don't matter what you do on the outside in the sense that some people will say, well, but I didn't react. Like I didn't go say anything or I didn't chase Okay, great. No, that's great. And I want to give people props for that because that means you're aware and you're interrupting the autopilot in you and you're choosing a different way to respond externally. But we want to go deeper and look at what happened internally because I have a lot of women and I used to do this years ago before I even knew what law of assumption was. I would sit there and I taught myself not to chase love in many ways, but I still held this unfavorable story in me. I just coped with it in a different way, but I still didn't manifest what I wanted because of who I was, the belief system that was, you know, perpetuating inside of me. So it's so important to change your belief system. Um, the most important reaction is what's happening internally, uh, because even that is gonna keep pushing out and keep manifesting in more and more of what you don't want. So the other reason why circumstances can appear, because it's all an illusion, appear that shit ain't working, right, or you're not getting what you want, is 
I'm going to explain this because I don't believe in this type of narrative, but I know some people do. So I want to explain it that will appeal to both. So some people say an energetic shift is happening. So I don't like to use the word energy because that's, um, to me, it's very ambiguous and people, we don't like, I used to hate with law of attraction, right? When they would always be like, well, just turn the dial, change the radio station and go from a new radio station. I'm like, well, bitch, I don't know. <laughs> like I'm changing the dial, but I don't know what the frequency is because I have, I felt love for my animals. I felt love for my child. I felt love for all these other amazing people and things in my life, but I still wasn't manifesting what I wanted because it's not just that simple. So uh, that's why I don't like to use that language, um, but some people do. So let's break it down in both ways. So when you're manifesting a new reality, you're, you're, you're either however you subscribe, right? Whether you're jumping into a new timeline, timeline, your old reality is crumbling, the new reality is uprising, whatever, it don't matter, whatever you subscribe to. It's sometimes, remember, you're disrupting. You're disrupting internally. You're disrupting momentum externally. So it's going to cause a little chaos sometimes. Sometimes that chaos is going to look big. And sometimes it's going to be small little chaos that you may not even really notice. Or it's just not really upsetting you. Um, but you're disrupting. You're disrupting your current reality. Whatever's been on autopilot, whatever's been the belief system, whatever's been the old you is changing course. And even if if you're not doing perfectly because none of us are you're not doing perfectly it's still requiring a conscious effort to change thoughts to disrupt old patterns to stop and look at fuck how did I just react to this right so there's a lot of disruption happening so it's gonna cause some kind of shift right so whether you look at it, it's an energetic disruption or you just look at it, it's a disruption into the old me and the old everything we want this that means things are changing you don't want things inside of you and the way your mind is focused in the same beliefs and the same perspectives and the same everything to always be the same because there is no change happening in you which means you're not going to get the dream reality you want because it requires a new level of you always always if you're making a million dollars and you want to make 10 million you're going to have to change if you're making forty thousand dollars a year and you want to make two hundred thousand dollars a year you're going to have to fucking change you're going to have to change your self-concept around money you're going to have to in success you're going to have to change um your perspectives perhaps around money you're going to have to change certain behaviors and actions in your 3d reality and let go of the old thoughts old beliefs and old uh, actions in your 3D reality that are not going to get you where you want to go, that are not going to allow you to manifest in the experience. If not, all of us would have been multimillionaires fucking, you know, at day 20 of life, okay? <laughs> like, it requires. And one of the things I love being my own business owner, and this applies if you work for other people, it doesn't matter, is you, everyone really is you pushed out. I've seen it in my love life and I definitely see it in my business life, right? With my clients, the kinds of women I call in to work with me, uh, and also just me as an entrepreneur and just my own journey of even, I don't have, um, a bad belief system around money or success, but I have nuances and different things I need to tweak that are keeping me stuck in certain areas in my business. So it's always a discovering of you. It's never a bad thing. Like this stuff is so fun and it's about you evolving and growing. So the other reason why you're, you're, you're releasing control and letting go. So a lot of you, you falsely believe that the more I affirm, the faster I'm going to get. Well, that ain't true. And it's releasing control. If you're still obsessing about your love life in the sense of whether it's a specific person or someone new you're involved with, and you're over here affirming like crazy, trying to get them to change and do something different, and you're not seeing it, so you keep thinking, well, you're still the old you. You're still in a codependent mindset that doesn't know their worth and value and needs someone to come in and be different in order for you to know things about yourself. So that means you're not going to get a consistent reality that's new, fulfilling, and what you actually want. So you're, you have to release the control and understand who, what does it mean to receive. If you learn how to receive, and the only way you can learn how to receive, especially when it comes to big things in your, like big manifestations, uh, things that are rooted in your identity, like self-concept, especially in your love life, is releasing the control of needing 
circumstances to be different. It, without the circumstance being different, you don't know it as fact. So you, you have to do that inner work to break the power that the 3D is holding over you. And you let go in the sense of not let go of the desire you want. You let go of the old thoughts, old perspectives, old feelings, and old decisions and actions that do not support the version of you who knows her worth and value. And that takes practice. A lot of you don't even know what that version of you is and who she looks like. Um, so you really got to drill down on that and practice being her because you're not her yet. You're, you don't, these are new, a new version of you. So it's uncomfortable and it's unfamiliar. And then the final piece is the breakdown before the breakthrough phenomenon. And again, this is not always because I've done, I've seen throughout the years, especially when I started understanding conscious manifesting and switching over to that via law of assumption, I have seen this work both ways. I have seen manifestations come in easily and gracefully, no, no negative circumstances presenting before. And I have seen where it appears, because everything's an illusion, it appears that things are going to shit. And then, right, the silver lining shows itself and it's like, ah, and then you don't care what transpired before because you ended up getting what you want. It's never going to shit. It's just understanding who am I looking at the circumstances and what's happening to me um, that is causing you to believe, think, or feel and be scared that possibly it is going to shit, but it never is. Um, so the breakdown before the breakthrough is that, again, you're disrupting. It's kind of uh, overlapping what I discussed uh, two points ago. You're overlapping, or it's overlapping because you're shifting you, which sometimes will create an upheaval around you. So it's really always about the frame and perspective and choices you make that are going to show you if you're like hacking your way into conscious manifesting or if you're prolonging and delaying being stuck in misery and a fucking reality you don't want. So it's really important to understand these things and then practice daily and if you don't have my goddess glow up daily blueprint for $47 I don't know what you're doing um, link is in my bio because you really want to understand how to create a routine and I share with you my own personal routine I did like four or five years ago at this point now for my self-concept and love but I also give you other routines that I've included so that you can pick and choose depending on your schedule um, what's going to be best suited for you um, because not one size fits all right um, if you also are sabotaging your love life, then get my self-sabotage detox course because I teach you the ways you're sabotaging subtly and not so subtly and then what to do to correct that so you can stop being that old version of you because we sabotage on a subconscious level. Most people aren't even aware of it. What does it mean when you want so when he's gone but don't want him when he was near? I don't know, you would need coaching for that. That could be your don't believe you're worthy of what you want, so when you get it, you push it away. I mean, that's what a lot of people do. That's one of the self-sabotage issues. You don't feel worthy of it. It's not normal for you, so why, why would you accept it? Consciously saying I want something versus subconsciously having a belief system and an identity that says I'm worthy of this are two fucking different things. Ah, oh, hi, Natalie, babe started this oh good thank you she started the course on saturday so many golden truths i love that thank you i miss you girl how's everything amazing so it, it's this is we want to get to a place so you have to overhaul your self-concept to make manifesting feel easily and effortlessly in certain areas again not all areas and once you do that, it just becomes a game. It, and then you just get more powerful in your conscious creation. And it gets to be really, really fun because you are not um, locked into 3D. 3D doesn't have control over you. You know and believe it, uh, in a process in you, in an internal process, which is your true power of what it means to receive. Because a lot of people don't, I didn't know how to receive. I couldn't receive in a lot of ways because my belief system didn't allow me. My belief system 
said, you're not worthy of this. This does not happen for you. I didn't consciously walk around thinking that way. But when I looked at my choices, when I looked at my actions, when I looked at my limitations in the sense of what I would say no to, what I would say yes to, it became very obvious of what I really believed my worth and value. This shows up in your business life. This shows up in your career. This shows up in your family, with your love life, in all areas of your life. Yes, thanks to you. I'm a master manifester. I love it. No, thanks to you, girl. I just shine the light. <laughs> I'm just shining the flashlight of hope tr and truth. <laughs> uh, you you got to do the work though, right? Because I can't jump in your brain and do it for you. So you give that credit to you. Yes, anything's possible to manifest. Doesn't matter. What what did you, babe? Did you not see the whole title of this thing? <laughs> So you, you have to understand that you're the key to it all. It's all an internal game. Um, and the goal is measuring through you, not through outside of you. So you don't look out the window and see, oh, is it working? Is it here yet? No. You, tr you trust and know. You're not going to trust and know in the beginning. That's what all the work is. That's what my God is uh, Daily Glow Blueprint course is about. That's what my Self-Sabotage Detox course is about. That's what my Mirror Effect course is about, which is all about everyone as you pushed out. Um, because it's critical. These are the things to understand and work on daily so that you get out of the reality you don't want. Um, it does require a different version of you so you can receive. You can't receive if you're trying to make it. You have to be. You don't know how to be someone who trusts and knows it's inevitable in whatever area. And think of the other areas in your life where it's easy to manifest, that you don't have this internal fight in you and it's easy for you to receive what you want. You know, it's easy for you to have people buy you things or give you money or, you know, have the perfect job, whatever. Like we all have our things, right? And then look at the area where it's not. The only reason why one area is easy for you over the other is because of the belief system up here. That's it. There's nothing else. I think it depends which course you want to do because they're all focused on the specific topic of whatever the course name is. So, I mean, they're all fucking cheap. You know, one's 47, one's $27. Like I made them super cheap. Um, so if you got to buy a couple, you buy a couple, but I would really look at if you can't right? and what you want to choose, what's most important for you. Do you want to master everyone as you pushed out or are you focused on, you know what? I really need help with creating a daily blueprint of a routine I can make for myself and adhere to daily so that I can, you know, continue in training myself into doing the inner work. I don't know what the issue is for you, babe. If it's sabotaging your love life and you're not sure all the ways you're sabotaging, well then the self-sabotage detox course. So it really just depends what you feel led to. I always say that whenever anybody emails me asking me about what courses to buy from me, you know, unless they have specific questions, right? I answer whatever the questions are about whatever course. But I, I always tell people, choose the one you feel called to. That's what I do. If I go on someone's thing and I'm like, ah, I don't know. I'm like, one's going to stand out to me over another. And then that's the one I probably end up buying. You know, so just sit with it. They're not going anywhere. I am going to be raising prices, but not like in the next week or anything. So you have time. So circumstances are an illusion. They're just an illusion. Why are they an illusion? Because they're not permanent. Nothing is permanent unless you're dead. That's it. Everything else is subjective. Thank goodness. And it's temporary. So it doesn't mean you're in denial of current reality. I am not in denial of what is happening in the world. I am not in denial of what is sitting in my bank account or not. I'm not in denial of the bills that I have to pay every month, whatever, right? Like it doesn't mean you're in denial of what is current. It means you are not in resistance of it because you understand your power and that this is all malleable and can change like that.
All right, I'm gonna jump off. I just wanted to come on and do this. Um, I am also, I am no longer on TikTok. I do not like that app. Um, they censor way too much for me. I am American who believes in the constitution. I do not do censorship. It's not my thing, even though all these things, Instagram does too, YouTube as well. But TikTok takes it to a whole nother level. So I have decided I am no longer gonna be on TikTok. And, um, I'm gonna leave my old content up there because I put a reel up there, the very last one that says like, hey, I'm no longer on this platform. So if you wanna find me, I will be on Instagram doing lives. I'm on YouTube where I have long form content. And I also just joined X because I do wanna support um, platforms that aren't into censorship. Um, you know, whatever, it, it isn't political, it's just being an American. So. Um, if you want to follow me on X, I'm probably going to do some stuff as I grow more people over there, like their spaces and different things. I don't know. I'm, I'm just learning X. <laughs> it's like so new when you get, it's so funny, right? Cause you're like on all these different social medias and then you go on a new one and it's like a whole new learning curve. But I was like, X seems really easy. I kind of like it. Um, it's, it just feels a lot easier. So I would love to see you over there. My, what is it? Handle over there is Kim Velez coach. Um, I post reels over there and I post, um, you know, written stuff, right? Like, uh, you'll see threads and different things over there. I worked with half a month in my life changed so much. It takes work, but she really is the real deal. Oh, I love you, Natalie. Love you. And thank you. You're everything I needed today. Oh, I love you too, Shirley Bird. Yes, we need this boost this morning. Good, good. This is because this is a thing. You should be waking up every fucking day and as soon as you open your eyes and say, wow, today's going to be such an incredible day. You know what I say every day to myself multiple times? And I, I go through different uh, things where there will be several months. I'll say one affirmation multiple times a day. And then, I don't know, I get bored with it. So I choose something different. So the kick I'm on right now currently is I say every day, multi like three or four times, I say that today, every day my life gets better and better in each and every way. Every day my life gets better and better in each and every way. I also say something similar where I'm like, wow, every day my life just gets greater and greater in every single way. And it is, it always does. I used to always be focused on specific person, but when I started working on my self concept, everything seems to be falling apart. Beautiful. That means shit is changing, babe. No, you don't want to be focused on the specific person because that's the obsessive mind that says, I'm not worthy. I know I used to be here. It's called codependency. When your brain is more fixated on changing the story of another person rather than changing the story of you, that is unhealthy. That is not a woman who knows her worth and value. And we have to be honest. It's not shaming ourselves. It's taking ownership because when you are not self-aware, you can't change what you're not aware of. So you want to take ownership like... Okay, why do I why do I want to incessantly affirm for this specific person to be different? Oh, because I still feel not good enough and unworthy and hurt and sad by the belief system I'm holding. And the only way I believe that it can change is if they come in and choose me. Well, guess what? Even if they come in and choose you, you still won't fucking believe it because it's not your truth. That's why you need them to change in order for you to know something different. So you want to change you because I want you to go bigger. I want you to scope out and see in reality that whether it's a specific person or 15 fucking years from now, I'm dating somebody else, whatever you want, because let me tell you, there's 8 billion people on the planet and ooh, there's a lot of good looking ones out there that got their shit together internally and are healed and just amazing, incredible people that we can all date, right? So you want to understand who do you want to be in your love life? Because a lot of you are doing it backwards where you're obsessed about them and needing them to be different, but you're not doing the inner work for you to be different, which is secure, confident, and receiving. That's what a goddess is. She knows she's amazing and not in an arrogant, obnoxious way. It's not that, you know, you need, well, whatever, you can manifest whatever you want, but like, it's really, I knew for me, I never wanted to be this version of myself again. Like, I was sick of it. It wasn't true. I was causing my own misery. I was saying yes to um, versions of men who were toxic and unhealed because I was. I perpetuated the pain in my own love life and I knew I had the power to change it once I learned Neville and understood that he was talking about self-concept. That's why I started the fucking movement. 
I started the movement in self-concept and love because the only other person who was talking about it and she called it different was Agnes Vivarelli. She called it, she just said self-love. Uh, but her and I were on the same page. We still are on the same page with this stuff and then everybody followed um, because it's the truth. And I had to change it in me because I did what, like there was only like seven of us on YouTube back then in like 2020 who were talking about manifesting through Neville and Law of Assumption, manifesting a specific person. Like five to seven of us. and. Me and Agnes Vivarelli were the only ones where pretty much every fucking video we talked about, I said self-concept, she said self-love. And everybody else was saying, you have changed story, specific person, change story, change story. I did all that. And I would have my specific person show up different, but I still felt insecure, not good enough. It was never enough. The way the brain works, it, it filters out the evidence in your reality and circumstances and makes you focus on what you believe about you. So everything he would, when he told me he loved me the first time, do you know what I did? <laughs> because my self-concept was so shitty, I couldn't accept it. So I had to pick it apart and say, was, was he joking? Did he mean it? Like, well, he didn't really sound that serious. Like, I could not receive what was coming to me because of my beliefs of me. So I did all that shit. It doesn't fucking work. If it worked, none of us would be here talking about self-concept ever. <laughs> there wouldn't be the movement that I started. It fucking works. You have to change you. If you don't know you're worthy, baby, you're not going to manifest in, even if you manifest in men, because when I I didn't know I was worthy. I manifested in men that saw good in me, but I rejected them subconsciously and consciously. Um, hi, love. You mentioned in a video fearing success in business like fear of losing freedom. What affirmations or routine would you recommend for getting rid of this mindset of losing freedom? Well, says who? I mean, for you always, it's not the affirmations, not what's magic. It's the perspective and story and frame you're changing and choosing for yourself. So the first thing I always do when I have a limiting belief is I'm like, hold up. One, I'm like, where the fuck did I get this from? Two, is it what I want to manifest? Three, do I have to keep believing it? Can I change it? Four, is this an absolute truth? Meaning this is for every human being on the planet. Like none of us cannot have this. And the answer is usually, you know, I don't know what the questions were. I just rattled them off my head, right? But like, it's usually proving that it's just my own limiting belief. So we can change any belief. So it, it's not, you have, where did you learn that fear of losing freedom says is correlated to success and business? Says who? Says who? Listen, even for me, I'm like, for five years, so I was, a, uh, you know, I'm a trauma therapist, so I had my own private practice before I joined online and turned into a coach. And the only reason why I turned into a coach was because I didn't want to be bound by HIPAA laws um, that prevented me from working with people out of state. And I didn't want to deal with all that and whatever. I still, whenever I work with a client, I still honor their respect and privacy, but I just didn't want to be bound. And I didn't want to do certain therapy and things like that. It's just different. It's very different of uh, being a coach versus a therapist. So that's why I became a coach was because I wanted to help people a little bit differently, but also be able to globally support the world rather than just being stuck and confined to the state of Florida, right? So, but before my private practice, I did a lot, I mean, before I became an online coach, I did a lot of in-person events. Um, I would host family workshops where I worked with family members of drug addicts, um, three-day workshops. They were eight hours long each with like another therapist. We did all these things. I would run groups about codependency and love and just different things like that. And I really love in person because I have a lot of fucking energy and this stuff lights me up and I just love coming together um, in the flesh together. I just think it's powerful as humans. So, but anyways, I jumped online, became a coach, right? Do everything on video. Well, I created a new routine and habit and I built my business organically and I built it quickly um, and very successfully and very consistently with the decisions and choices and behaviors I made or have done over the last four and a half, almost five years now, maybe five years now. And the whole time though, my vision is to be speaking in live in person audiences, not just Zoom, which I love Zoom. I'm grateful for it and I will always be online. 
But because I got so hunkered down and focused on this way of building my business and it became just my identity, it became my daily routine and my daily habit, even though I've been saying consciously for five years now, I'm going to do these live events. Every year I'm like, I'm going to do live events, like in person. I do them on, on Zoom, right? But in person, I haven't, I haven't until now. I got my first one booked. Uh, I'm going to be speaking live um, in Texas. So that'll be on November 12th. If you want details, um, shoot me an email and I'll send you the link or DM me in here and I'll send you the link. You can buy the ticket. It's not my event. I'm just speaking at it. Um, but that was my first thing because I had to get real serious. And I've been really working on my self-concept the last year and looking at my vision for business. And while I'm building online, I'm challenging beliefs that I've been holding because those beliefs and behaviors and decisions are great. They're good. There's nothing wrong with them because they led me here in my business. But I'm going for greatness. So I have to release good in order to get great, right? That some things that we've done. So there's decisions I'm doing where I'm still going to have obviously content online because I do want to continue reaching the world. And I think video is important for people who can't come to me in per person. But I'm also, I've been so blocked in building a community local to me too, because people can come fly and see me too. Um, and so anyways, I did, I, because I'm changing all of this, my new focus and daily habits now in my business are very different than what they have been all this time. So more of my focus and energy is going, I have one day a week now where I just do content, like I'll do a live and I'll make my YouTube videos. I have my shorts and everything that are going to go out and that's it. And everything's scheduled and fucking done. And then the rest of the week is going to be building networks of people in my local community and putting on live events because I'm, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like I light up, but I just, but the point of this is, is that we get so conditioned into a way of us that isn't uncomfortable sometimes, but isn't really what we want. And we know we want something different, but we keep putting it off for many different ways, reasons, and excuses. So a lot of it is fear. A lot of it is the programming and belief system that's keeping us locked in this one way. Like you got to understand my vision when I went online was, um, you know, reaching the world, which I still am reaching and I still want, I still hold that vision, but it doesn't mean that I can't also be active in my local community and do both. But I was solely focused this way because it worked and it still is working, but it's, I don't want to play this game where it's only online. So if, if I don't want to play that game, then I got to get out of the belief system that says I have to, right? Because that's what I did. So these are just the things to really understand that it's not about always releasing something that's hurting us, which is definitely important. We do want to do, but it's also looking at where are we limiting ourselves from our greatness because we all have greatness. Uh, but a lot of times we're not aware and we're not understanding that we're still holding on to good, which is preventing us from great. Oh, thank you, Lori. You are so empowering and inspiration. Love you and so grateful for your content. Oh, I love you too. Thank you. I'm grateful for you. So I love you guys. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And um, I will see you on the next live. Bye.